you know, Brett Victor showed some really, really cool demos in his talk, and I was curious, kind of after I saw it, how hard it would actually be to go about trying to, to build one of these myself. And so I created sort of the live editable game demo that he had. So you can see here I have some closure script code on the left side, I have the game running on the right side, and, you know, I can move around, I can jump, there's collision, if I fall off the edge, I die and restart. Um, but the point he was making with his game was that you wanted to be, you know, connected with the thing you had created. And that means being able to, to edit it in place. So, for example, you know, I have this draw player function, I can actually change the color of my player. Right? I do that, bam, now it's pink. Right? I mean, that's kind of a trivial example. Let's actually change the speed of the player. Right Now I'm really fast, right? 8 instead of 5. Or I can make myself really slow. So now I move really painfully slow here. Or, um, you know, I can change things like how high my jump goes. As an example, it's one of the things he also did. So now I jump a little bit higher, and let's make it totally ridiculous. 22. Now I jump really high. Um, but I think the more interesting parts of his demo are actually the fact that you could edit the game within itself, right? So this idea that, oh, I can click around and start adding terrain. So you can see here, I can click to add blocks, I can click the blocks to remove them if I want. The game is all responding to these events in real time. So for example, I remove those blocks, the, the thing goes away, right, and I'll just sit here and fall forever. Um, but by far, the coolest thing he showed was being able to do some actions and actually pause the game and see how changing some of the variables would affect sort of that projection in time, right? And so if I wanted to be able to jump up onto that platform over here on the right-hand side. You can see here, I pressed S to pause the game, and we see the actions I've taken, right? So I started here, and there are these sort of ghost images, and this is where I was ultimately ending up. If I wanted to make it so that I ended up on this platform by doing the exact same set of actions, I can now modify the game, right? So I need to jump a little bit higher, all right? About 14, that looks pretty good. Looks like I'll make it basically up there, and we need to go a little bit faster so that we move about 7, and there you go. I made modifications to the, the game which modified the projection. There's really cool stuff. So now if I press S to unpause the game, you'll see I'm here, and I'm able to do that jump just like you saw. And one of the points he was making is it's significantly more efficient to be able to modify the game in this way Otherwise, you would have had to have sat there and go, well, is, is 10 enough? Is 11 enough? And in the case like this, where you needed to edit multiple variables, it could have taken you quite a while to figure it out. So this was a lot of fun, actually, to put together. And I think one of the coolest things uh, I got out of this, actually, was, you know, it's great to be able to, to modify this and mess around with, like, the jump and move speeds and all that. And the more interesting things, however, was jumping, pausing, and then actually placing uh, things in your path, right? Placing blocks, modifying the environment, and seeing what happens as a result. So you can see here, based on the inputs I gave it and all of that, if I put blocks here and there, this is where I would end up, right? Uh, so I kind of closed myself in there. Let's see, I'd hit the top, hit there, and would have ended out through there. Um, and it's, I, I found actually that it's, T uh, just tons of fun actually messing around with that and seeing how the sort of physics play out in real life and all of that. Um, and uh, I think one of the funnier things I discovered, and it was actually something he brought up in his talk, was I had a bug that ended up being a lot of fun. Um, so let me adjust the, the jump speed down here. Um, you can see here I check to make sure that I can only be jumping if I'm... Uh, moving up, right? So if I'm starting to fall, I can't be jumping anymore. And before, I had this automatically setting this to false anytime I hit an edge. And the result of that is actually, if I hit an edge from above, I'll stick to it. So for example, if I jump and hold the, the spacebar button here, I'll end up sticking to this roof, right? And actually, this ended up introducing kind of a fun sort of aspect to the gameplay. I go off the side here, come up on top, Right, and then add some more blocks. And then I can 
you know, fling myself all over the place. So uh, I, I definitely buy into the, the, the statements he made, right? That connecting to your creation uh, really does, I don't know, bring you more into it and actually makes it a lot more fun. Um, this was just a really interesting you know, project to build. Uh, put the code on GitHub, so play around with it and have fun. <laughs>